Hi, this is Mr. Keevy again. I thought I'd take a few minutes and give just a uh, mini lecture on your first writing assignment, the uh, <clears throat> aphorism narrative essay. Um, so they're just so you're clear on everything and kind of understand what my expectations are and really kind of what the assignment requires. I thought I'd go through this with you a little bit. So week two asks you to kind of prepare for this. Uh, the document hints for an aphorism S for the aphorism essay, I think gives you some helpful uh, places to start working on this essay. Uh, later on today, I'm going to go ahead and post uh, the information for week three, which will give you information on the draft that you're going to submit to be graded of this aphorism essay. And um, I'll go through that a little bit with you, but I want to just kind of explain the assignment a little bit more in detail this way than just having you rely on uh, what's posted on Blackboard. Um, so the first thing that we want to look at is the actual aphorism prompt, the um, instructions for writing the essay. So we'll take a look at those real quick. So this is just practice to use writing process, how to generate ideas, how to go about drafting. And um, a lot of it, really the important part of this is your ability to use specific details to help your reader visualize your ideas and how to make this essay more effective. The two important questions you have to ask yourself and focus on in this essay is, who could gain from reading the essay, which is audience, and what might they gain? Purpose. Why would you want anybody to read this and what could they walk away from if they read this? So um, this essay is basically you telling about something that happened to you. I want you to pick an experience. It doesn't have to be a great big deal kind of experience, just something that you learn something about yourself something that may have changed you some way or some way that something that helped you to perceive things differently uh, anything like that fair game and i'm going to read your um your uh, discussion board submissions and i'll give you feedback on those so that's going to take me a couple days but i will get those to you hopefully by you know the end of the day saturday um the essay has to have some kind of clear central point or thesis and a good thing to do is kind of include the aphorism in that, but you don't really have to. And I'm going to give you an example of a thesis statement here in a little bit, so just kind of hang with me. I would just tell this in the order things happen in a chronological way. Uh, it doesn't have to be a really long essay. Two type double space pages is a minimum. All right, so the initial steps, really, you have to decide on an aphorism and the event or experience and its relevance to the aphorism which um, you're kind of doing right now. That's kind of where you're at right now. Uh, I've included with this prompt the planning sheet for essay one. I want to talk about that for a second. Uh, these are basically the reporter's questions, and this is a good place for you to just start and brainstorm the kind of relevant details that you might want to include in this. So um, we have let me just switch this so we can see a little better. <clears throat> um, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Now that doesn't mean all of these questions are relevant, but I think you should play them out, write down as much as you can to kind of help you develop the details that you're going to include in your um, essay. So who you might want to think about, the people who were involved or who are relevant to this experience, maybe even who were affected by it. You could, what, what happened, what did you learn, what caused the incidents, what's the value of the experience, maybe when it took place is important, maybe it happened when you were 12 years old or 14 years old, uh, maybe the season or the time it happened is, is relevant. Now, you have to decide what's relevant or not, but I think the more you write down, you can make better choices about this. Where did it happen, setting place, this is another one. Maybe it's going to be important, maybe not, but... I'd go ahead and uh, jot down ideas about it. Why is the experience memorable or significant? Why should others read about it? Why does the aphorism relate to the incident? These should be all questions you should be able to answer. How did it change you? How does the aphorism fit the experience? How should others behave given a similar experience? How can the reader gain from the narrative? <coughs> Excuse me. These are all really um, relevant questions, 
these, uh, in my experience, the students who give this a pretty good shot, it's a really good brainstorming exercise just to kind of get the details that you would want to include in this uh, piece of writing. So I, I really encourage you to, you don't have to do it on this form, you can do it on a piece of paper, but I think, uh, I think you'll benefit from doing this. So, um, let's see here. Um, this hints, so, well, let me go back to this. So one of the reasons that I had you uh, read the two essays, Us and Them and Myth of the Latin Women, is I want you to really focus on how these writers use details. And they use very descriptive and vivid details. Details of emotion, how do they feel, what people look like, what places look like. Uh, those are the kind of details that are going to make your um, essay successful. So. Go, you could go back and read these, but I really want you to focus on how does a writer use details in a narrative. And these are both narratives, okay? Um, let's take a look at this uh, hints for writing the aphorism essay real quick. Okay, so you got to come up with something to write about. So some kind of uh, personal experience would be the best thing to do and you can approach this kind of in the initial brainstorming you can if you want you could find an if aphorism that you like or find interesting then try to come up with a personal experience that relates to it or you can go ahead and just brainstorm the personal experience that you think others might be interested in and then find an aphorism that fits that experience either way you know either way works best there's down here i've provided you a list of some links to some places that have long lists of aphorisms. So if you decide to write about something, then maybe you can go find an aphorism that fits it. Uh, the aphorism in, isn't the most important aspect um, of the writing project. It's just an interesting way to relate to the reader. We all have heard aphorisms. We know about them. It's something that can connect you to the reader a little more strongly. So the most important thing is, is that you develop an effectively developed and supported narrative that clearly illustrates the experience and shows the reader, shows how the reader can benefit from reading about the experience. And this is really a place where you really focus on audience and purpose. Okay. So back to process and, and you'll hear me talk a lot about that. So you need to understand the assignment. So that's why you read that aphorism prompt that I just went over. Then you have to determine what it is you want to write about. Uh, think about a meaningful experience and then find an aphorism that fits or you might have an aphorism. We've already talked about that. Use the planning sheet or any of those pre-writing methods described in 289 through 297. Uh, maybe just kind of a rough outline to kind of see how your ideas fit together and then you need to develop a thesis statement and again I'm going to kind of give you an example of that. Uh, pay special attention to 345-47 they talk about thesis statements. Um, so if you go back into the discussion board I, I did a post kind of telling you about myself, I think my deepest, darkest secrets, I called it. And, and I talk about me going back to college at the, when I was around 30, 31 years old. Um, so, you know, the idea is I was pretty scared. Uh, I know some of you are kind of older returning students or non-traditional students like me, and, and it is a little scary. Uh, and I kind of did a spin on the... Um, aphorism you can't teach an old dog new tricks well i would say that i could probably use that aphorism to show the untruth of it when um, um i could say in fact i learned that you can teach an old dog new tricks or it's really more of an excuse than a fact you know so, well if i say that then i don't have to do it but it's not really true so this is about writing the draft Focus on your body paragraphs. Your introduction is the most important element of this project. Uh, I, I would offer you this suggestion. Why don't you not worry about just as you're drafting to not even worry about an introduction. Just maybe kind of write a thesis statement to help you focus and really focus on the body of the essay. I'll tell you right now, your grade is not really about your introduction and your conclusion. The thing I look at, the thing that I'm evaluating are those body paragraphs. 
Uh, you could have a great introduction and a great conclusion and nothing going on in between. And if there's nothing going on in between in those body paragraphs, it really doesn't matter. Um, one of the ways I tell students to think about it, and this kind of, kind of sounds cliche, but you know, if you think about an essay like a sandwich, typically when you get a sandwich, the bread isn't the big issue. It's what's in between the bread that you're really concerned with. Well, in any piece of writing, it's not really the introduction and it's not really the conclusion. It's that stuff that's in the middle. It's the meat. It's whatever you want on that sandwich. And that's the way I look at it, and that's the way I'm going to be grading it. Okay? Write the essay in first person. Uh, and just keep in mind, it's your job to help the reader visualize your idea. Okay? Okay. Uh, I'll have to find this sample narrative. Maybe I need to put it in there. Um, remember, we need to think of this as a messy pro uh, process and an act of discovery. So, you know, a lot of the stuff that you've been reading and the things that I've talked about and the things, information I've posted should help you be able to get this draft done. Um, so the next thing I kind of want to look at is, um, let me get rid of this real quick. Okay, so this is what I posted in the discussion board. And what I want to do is, you could, I could almost think of this as maybe a first draft of a personal narrative telling about what I went through and what I felt and the kind of things that uh, I experienced when I first realized I was, or when I first decided I was going to go to college. Um, now, what I could do here is I'm just going to kind of, in this area here, I'm going to kind of see if I can put together some kind of thesis statement. Um, I feel like this is a pretty good example of a draft that tried to use as many details as I could. So let me, um, let's, let's, let's look at a thesis statement. So I might say, okay, so I kind of talk about you know, well, my wife talked me into going to school. I wasn't happy with my job and that I felt, you know, I, I didn't feel like I would fit in, that I was too old, too dumb to learn anything. So maybe my thesis statement might um, go like this. When I decided to go to college, I learned that, in fact, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Okay, so this thesis statement does two things that a thesis statement needs to do. Um, it It says, okay, here's the topic, and the topic is, is, I went back to college, and then what is the main idea, the central idea that I want to develop related to that topic? And the central idea that I want to kind of deal with is, is I learned that, in fact, you can teach an old dog new tricks. So I've kind of tied my aphorism into that. <clears throat> That's not necessarily what you have to do, but hopefully this kind of gives you an idea that this thesis statement really has two functions. It, it kind of states what the general topic is, going back to college, and what's the idea that you're going to focus on, that you're going to develop throughout the essay, and is that, in fact, you can teach an old dog new tricks. So I've kind of done both things there. So um, I don't know if that'll help, but I'm going to kind of throw that out there. Now, another thing that I would kind of want to look at and I'll and I'll send you an announcement today or I'll, I'll send an announcement let you know this for week three there's two parts part one really just deals specifically with the aphorism essay okay um, so so I'm going to post week three in two parts part one deals with this essay. This is kind of part two. We'll focus on getting us ready to start working on our next assignment. So I'm going to read and respond to the discussion posts. Uh, after you receive my responses, you can get started on your essay, and then you're going to submit it via the assignment labeled aphorism essay. Uh, and 
this this is what that's going to look like. It's going to have this little icon here and then aphorism essay. Uh, there's instructions down. So this is going to be due by, sorry, 625, 11 o'clock p.m. And here's some links that tell you how to uh, submit assignments in the Blackboard assignment thing. So if you're having a little trouble, or you're not quite sure. I, I think for all of you, it might be a good idea to just to take a look at these links because it has talks a little bit about what formats work best and things like that. So, so that's kind of where we're going. I, I hope this gives you a better idea of kind of what you need to do for this assignment. And um, if you have any questions or anything, you can feel free to email me. So I'm going to kind of let this go, uh, and then you can take a look at week three. And I haven't really done many of these kind of videos, but I'm going to start doing them more, so kind of bear with me. I'll probably get better at it as we go along. Uh, if you find these useful or if you think there's anything I could do differently, uh, you could certainly send me a comment on that discussion board called Questions and Concerns. Uh, I'd be glad to hear your feedback. So uh, good luck on this, and I look forward to reading these assignments. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, good luck on this, and I'll be probably posting more of these later.